just keep it as simple as possible, man. Like, a lot of you are going to overthink things that fundamentally don't matter. Uh, I think we always talk about the same thing on the online trainer show in terms of what solves what's going on with your business. Get some people involved so they can corrupt the process you think you perfected. That's that's one great way to yeah. save yourself some time. Just get a couple of humans involved in it. They'll mm-hmm. they'll straighten everything out for you. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. What was it you said, Amber? It was kind of smart. Uh, it did. It what did we seem wished, reasonable. Yeah, what we wished we would have known when we first started. Oh, that's, that's, that's a, a great good one. Yeah, yeah. Bad, right? So you guys don't know, but I just communicated that on the back channel to Jonathan, uh, and it seemed like he remembered it on the podcast. And that's how we work here. That didn't happen. <laughs> Jonathan, your light is amazing. You, you've got a glow to you that I've not seen since at least Tuesday last week. <laughs> like, you've got a, you just got a glow about you. I enjoy it. You're, Amber's got sort of like the, uh, the, school, the school nurse's office lighting going on back there like (laughs) yeah i mean you know you know that she's a lovely woman but sort of nothing looks wonderful in that particular light uh so it's it's uh it's it's downgrading amber's innate million light songs i can't see it's a lot of lights but the the light above your head is got is conflicting it's almost like a it's almost like a celestial supernova like it's it's like a star that's deconstructing and going supernova and eventually is going to be a black hole it's like orange on one side and there's a blue on the other. I, I don't like you turning off things as I'm describing them either, Amber. Like that, that angers me for some reason. I don't like that. I'm sorry, Keto. Um, excuse me, bunny face. Uh, what's, what, what's your hey thing there, today? Hey bunny face. How you doing, bunny face? Oh, it's not, it's not my bunny face. I mean, I guess it's technically mine because I found it in my yard. I found a bunny face. Oh, my face God. Just a face? Just a face. What fresh hell is it that you like? Right? <laughs> right? Like something ate a whole bunny except for the face and they left it in my yard. Holy smokes. And you're talking, you're talking you like remember, the whole head or just literally just um, the face is left? It's just like the little, it's like the snout. You can see like the teeth and the nose and a little bit Holy like part crap. of an ear. Oh, hell no. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, right? Like I'm there minding my own business and like repotting plants and whatever. And then I turn up oh, like, ah! <laughs> like, there's a there's a funny face oh, everybody's like what do you mean and i'm like it's a funny oh, face and they're like it's a funny and i'm like it's a funny face like, it's just a funny Jonathan, face like I'm- Jonathan said hell no uh i don't i don't know what the political climate is in barry but i'm sure bunny face is somewhere on the mafia spectrum of of, of sort of warnings that's all i'm thinking I don't know if he's trying to reform. In the bed, it's a bunny face in the yard. (laughs) Yeah, somebody's trying to intimidate the mayor with bunny faces. Right, right. Oh my god, times are tough. They can't use horses. Around, so around this this exact time last year was when I was finding that the the squirrel tail. Remember, there was a random tail of a squirrel in my garage in the previous house and now I find a bunny face. So I feel like little by little I can start putting together my my own chimera. Like my own mixture of like a monstrosity of an animal, <laughs> no? The camera, <laughs> chupacabra. As perfect um, as you are, Carolina. That's pardon? Ter- that's really dark for your personality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you totally ruined the bunny face thing for me too. By the way, like I'd, I'd like for you to remove that from your screen now, please. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm just not gonna read it again. Uh, you know, for those, obviously, uh, some of you watch the YouTube, some of you listen to us, uh, but for those that watch the YouTube, Keto showed up with a cute little ponytail and she was smiling and, you know, said bunny, and then she took her hair down, very Pantene Pro V commercialish, uh, it, it, the way that she does it, you know, so I thought we were going to get an endearing story. Maybe some of Jeff's constituents saw her and said, oh, your girlfriend has such a cute bunny face or something like that. No, no, none of that. It's... It's mob ties. It's mob ties and pets. Are, you know, if I was pitching Catalina's yard, I would say to, to Hollywood, I would say, think think casino meets pet cemetery. Like, and in scene. Like, that's how I would sell. That's how I would pitch the, what do they call it? The treatment. 
That's how I pitched the treatment for a movie spectacle about Catalina's front yard. You know, guys, it's sort of a sort of like a pet cemetery meets uh, meets casino. Uh, <laughs> run with it. Uh, so, Keto, Make it happen. congratulations on once Thank again you. topping yourself in the 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 absolute horror show that is your your, your the premises around your 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 residence. Um, oh, thank you, thank you. I okay. am keeping a book of notes for reasons why I never will visit you uh, <laughs> anywhere that you live. I'll just go to Jonathan's house. Uh, he's got weights there. Dude, uh, Carolina's got a bunny face dead on her lawn. I've got a bunny <laughs> den with about 10 baby bunnies that Calvin oh, and I were oh, like picking up and holding and like petting it's yesterday. It's much nicer. Yeah. It's a much better story. I'll visit Jonathan. The difference Wait until something you and I, finds them and eats them all and leaves the face. Mm, oh, yo, there is. Oh, yo, there is gated in. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I mean, then, of course, I'm trying to explain this to my kids, and then I'm like, it's the circle of life. It's <laughs> not. That's not how the circle of life works. No, that's not how works. The circle of life is they you... would eat the face. Yeah, they what, would eat the face. what you're experiencing is. Uh, I believe I believe that it's called hmm, political uh, <laughs> political intimidation. intimidation. Political intimidation, I believe it's called. There's going to be um, a new highway built to uh, the olive oil manufacturer's uh, factory. There's Holy going smoke. to be um, uh, a, a very specific prohibition placed. On right. <laughs> right. all of these things are going to happen in the town of Barry. A, a speakeasy in Barry. <laughs> yeah. Just go where the game, bunny face. Bunny right, face. We, stand on, we stand on the corners. Yeah, right. Boy, boy, crazy boy. Boy, boy, crazy boy. Crazy. Cool. But <laughs> You know, Broad, Broadway fights always end in a dance. It, it, you know, oh, that's, 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 a, that's my jam. I've that's, always wanted to fight in a dance off. Nobody will take me up on it. It's you just know, dreadful. The, the dance off was a. It was. It was. It was a very popular '90s technique. You know, early 2000s. You know, we, if it weren't for the dance off, we might not have great actors like Channing Tatum, right? Mm -hmm. uh, class, classic dance off man. Uh, you've got, you've got your, um, you've got John your, Travolta. uh, who, who? Frank Sinatra? John Travolta. Oh no, yeah, well, Travolta. he was earlier, Tra before okay. night. Tra 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 Travolta. Right. Travolta's a great dance-off man. You've got the R&B dance-off man though, too. You get, you got, you know, like, uh, I can't remember that kid's name. I think his name Marquez Houston or something. He was in like a group called B2K. You got your Chris Browns. Chris Browns was, he was a, a dance-off man. If you've seen Stop the Yard. Uh, you know, I always wanted to get involved in a conflict that ended by by someone saying, well, let's set it off. And then and then we <laughs> proceed to set whatever the thing is on. You take that thing and you set it off. And that's <laughs> that's how you resolve the conflict, because it was set on something. But no, you've, you've got to shake your groove thing. You got you got to shake your ass. Watch yourself, as Mystical said. Uh, and then you set it off. You set the thing off that was on. That's how I like to resolve conflict. You know, guns, sure, that's tough. You're a tough guy. You fight, you know. But can you pirouette with six of your friends uh, right. on right. concrete and sneakers? Because yeah. that takes a skill set that most people don't have. Uh, I, I live in that place. So, Jonathan, what are we talking about? What did, what did you make up uh, at early on this? Oh, Amber, Amber said it. Yeah, this is, this is an Amber question. Yeah, Amber, what are we what are we talking about? You're <laughs> you're very much tuned in to what's going on here today, Amber. Uh, <laughs> you're focused. Uh, what are we talking about? What we wish we would have known when we first started. Oh, that's easy. Not to do a podcast. Um, is the show <laughs> over now? <laughs> show notes can be found at onlinetraining.com slash podcast. We brought you another riveting. And we solved all your problems in five minutes or less here. Don't uh, start a podcast. So, so, so this is this is a good subject. Actually, we'll make it good because we've proven that we don't need a great topic. We just talk for a little bit, and one of us will say something that makes sense. Um, 
So in dealing with the online tra- the academy, the online trainer academy, students and graduates, uh, we find that they run into challenges that they sometimes may perceive that we've not run into. Uh, mm-hmm. They are getting the benefit of a collective of knowledge at this point. There's so many graduates that have come through, have gone on to become amazing online trainer academy mentors. Uh, Amber heads up our mentorship program in the in the academy. Um, but we've all been there, right? Like there was a time when there weren't a lot of people to ask. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, there was there was a point where you could only kind of ask Jonathan and maybe one or two other people. You know, hey, I'm I'm having trouble. What's going on here? So Jonathan probably has some information that he can share. I know Keto and I do because I know for a fact we mess this up every way that you can mess it up. Like we've left yep. no territory <laughs> unexplored in terms of <laughs> in terms of doing this thing the wrong way. Um, so we can offer you the benefit of our knowledge here today if Jonathan allows us to talk freely. Sometimes he doesn't. Uh, and and we can help because, you know, he's an interrupter. Uh, again, you know. <laughs> P- politely, most politely obstructive person I've ever met. Uh, he's, he smiles and then he just disregards what your, what your train of thought is uh, as he tells oh, the story. Have, yeah, because I have my own agenda. That's why. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and you've you've made that clear over a hundred plus episodes, Jonathan. That at any point you'll just talk about whatever you want to talk about randomly. It, it's his show, you know. He's the only person upside down on the banner, so uh, so he has he, he and barefoot, so he's well within his rights to do so. If you're barefoot on the graphic, you're in charge. That's it's a rule of online training. Um, it's a thing. So let's talk then, Jonathan and Catalina and Amber. If you want to, you seem to be preoccupied as usual uh, about some of the things that uh, we wish we would have known when we started. Can can I share my thing first? It's quick. I'm it, you may maybe yes. it'll kick off the conversation. Here's the thing that I wish I would have known when I started. I wish I would have known that my name wasn't something to toil over uh, in terms of building my online business. I love the name Fitness Jones Training. People don't know what it means generally, you know, and I I toiled over it a bit and I feel like I sunk a little bit too much time into that. It could have been just as well Ren Jones Training or Ren's Fit. Like it wasn't that important. And I remember being fairly stressed about it when, it, when I, when I was going through deciding that and it, the juice in that case just wasn't worth the squeeze. That's that's a surface level thing, but I do sort of wish that I hadn't been so, I don't know, preoccupied with the name. I, I definitely lost time on that. Uh, feel, feel free to interject, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. No, you're I, good. You're good. That's, you're good. That's, that's, my, that's my first thing uh, that I can think of. There are many, 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 many other things uh, that I can share, but it I don't want the whole show to be about me and, and my family. I have one. I'll yeah. share my next. Yeah, so, just j- jump in there, kiddo. I'm going to have some water. Good. All right. So for me, what I, I, I think I, in the beginning, I had this overwhelming feeling like I was supposed to already know exactly what direction to go with in my business. Like mm-hmm. I, I felt really lost because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And on top of that, I was beating myself, myself up for the fact that I was that I felt unsure about which direction to go. I didn't know if I wanted group classes or if I wanted individual or if I wanted online or if I wanted, it didn't matter. Like I wish I had known back then that it was totally fine to try all the things, just try all the things because that is exactly the process to figure out where it is that you fit in the fitness industry. For me now I can tell you, for example, I don't enjoy one-on-one training as much as I do uh, groups, uh, group efforts with a lot of people, a lot of energy, a lot of, you know, others who take the pressure off of you always being the one on and present. I love that because I feed off of other people. So if it's just a one-on-one and my client is really struggling and then sometimes I struggle myself. So then it's like, how do I, how am I equipped to, to help a person who's in their own struggle while I'm in my own? It's difficult, right? So in a group setting, it's so much easier for, for that to not be a point of pressure. So, Mm -hmm. but that's something that I learned throughout the years of giving it a try. And that's how I can confidently say that now. And just that, like, I wish I had laid off the pressure on myself for just knowing it all and knowing exactly where I was going to fit it right from the start, because you, you can't, you've just got to do things. Mm -hmm. 
Jonathan, I feel like we got on topic too early in the conversation. Would you care to interject a travel story here or maybe a funny story about how <laughs> one of the three of your co-hosts failed or did something embarrassing in the past? Uh, that's on brand for you at this point in the episode. What are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's any consolation. I wasn't paying any attention to the post bit. So what are we talking about? Again? <laughs> <laughs> that, that we're sending you a bunny face. That's what we're talking oh, about. Oh, can we talk about how Amber has been has been quietly trolling me from afar? So. She's been trolling you majestically. Yeah. This is be- better than a bunny face. Tell them. Tell them. Every 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 few weeks, I get a James Clear postcard, and. <laughs> It just arrives at my door and it doesn't have a name on it. Um, and here's where, here's where Amber screwed up. Um, she didn't, if, if she really wanted to troll me, then what she would do is she would get people around the country to be sending me these things. I have people around the world doing it, thank you very much. And yeah. two, it just actually was not my idea. And three, I was going to make it bigger, but I got downvoted on the bigger. So. Well. <laughs> As I said in our in our Facebook group chat, Amber, I hope that this is absorbing all of your salary, and you and Nate are forced to eat rice and beans for the rest of your days as a result. I would do anything for Nate to eat rice and beans. Well, that's all you're going to be able to afford. Maybe a can of tuna once a month. So, Jonathan, are you getting any good ideas from the quotes? I'm not reading them. No, they're going straight they, in the garbage. I'm not even looking at them. Are they helping you in any way? Oh, I was going straight There's in the a lot of wisdom in them, you know? What, yeah, what about habit stacking? Have you stacked any habits recently? Uh, it's a great, great technique that James... Bro, I've been stacking habits since before James Clear became famous, okay? Oh, okay, so you, you're familiar with the habit stacking. I'm very familiar with it. I wrote a book about habits before he did, okay? Okay? Oh, did you? Jesus. What section is that in? I've never, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. Yeah, you go in, the, you go in your local Barnes and Noble, and the James Clear books are everywhere. They like they yeah. block out the sun. It's like an I'm eclipse aware. of James Clear text. Um, mm-hmm. So, in, in any case, yes. Yeah, so, so Jonathan, you know, you what? you've you've built a a large, a fairly <laughs> significant business in in this industry, uh, specifically in the industry in in the in the silo of helping professionals uh, engage in business and then niching down again, sort of in, in the online space. This is not where you started. Ignite the Fire was generally a book about the business of fitness. Oh, it had nothing to you do know. with online when I started, when I wrote no, the, no, first, no, the first not, edition. Not when, I, when I did the revised edition, we added in a section about online training, but, uh, but the first edition didn't mention it. So, you know, I want to, I want to piggyback off what Keto said about, not realizing that you didn't have to have it all figured out because there was an evolution to your business. Can you speak to that, Jonathan, of where you started versus where you are now uh, and, and the realization that you don't have to be super specific at the beginning, like allowing the business to evolve naturally? Like, what, what, are, you, what are your thoughts there? I knew nothing when I started. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. I literally started a blog and did not know what the word blog meant. That was how little amazing. I knew. It was That's amazing. It was as I mean, when this is like going to be funny to you, but like it was a simpler time when right. I started my business. I was there. I remember. You could not. I mean, you you could find information about like about anything you wanted to, but you had to go out and find it. It wasn't thrown at your face like a monkey throws poop at the wall. <laughs> you know, it wasn't... And that, wait, is that a James Clear quote? Are you quoting it's, James Clear? It sounds very James Clearish to me. No. I'm, I imagine that he doesn't have a sense of humor, so it's probably Those cards are paying off. Um, it was it was a simpler time, right? Like you didn't know about all of the things that you should do, so you were forced to figure it out from the start, which oftentimes right. took longer. But there was also a lot less comparison. Mm-hmm. There, there just, I mean, I I had no idea. I was so ignorant around everything that I should be doing that I just did it. Like I was so unbelievably ignorant. I mean, I wrote a book for my industry at twenty four years old. What kind of gumption? Do you have to have to do that? Like it's a lot of balls, kid. 
who the hell was I to write that book? Well, nobody else did it. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> and you know exactly. what? The old guard of the industry really did not like me. Because rightfully so. Who the hell is this kid to write a book about our industry? I've been doing this for 20 years. Well, why didn't you write the book, idiot? Right. That's exactly. why nobody listens to you. And yeah. uh, I mean, that's we know so much about all of the things that we should be doing these days. And, and we know too much about it. And as a result, it stops us from doing the thing. I actually find this concept fascinating. Um, this idea of how do you know enough about something so that you can take action on it responsibly so as to avoid catastrophic potential for catastrophic failure? But you leave yourself open enough to invent, to create, to iterate, and more so, you don't know all of the reasons why you shouldn't do it or all of the things you should do that get you overthinking the thing and as a result stop you from doing it. Um, and and, and I, there is a point there where you can know enough about something. And at that point, your job is to actually not go and like, like anything beyond that where you're like, oh, I just need to learn one more thing. It's like, you're procrastinating, bro. You are. Yeah. You, you, are, you are not taking action. And it is way easier to create the facade that you are just learning something else to become better at this fitness thing. We talk about this all the time. I mean, it's a very common frustration why people don't start the online trainer academy. They do... Pick your poison, what certification, what education beforehand. It's like, you know enough. If you've done your initial certification, you know enough. Mm -hmm. And at this point, a lot of the reason why people don't start the Online Trainer Academy is because it comes with it some measure of pressure that you're actually going to do something once you do it. Whereas more continuing education on fitness or female specific fitness or nutrition or whatever comes with it zero pressure to do anything which is why you do it mm -hmm. right. which is why yeah. you're not getting anywhere even though you're smarter yeah. results in business with clients impact is not directly correlated with how much you know it's directly correlated with how much you know and how much you're able to take action on what you know. Mm -hmm. That's a serious, serious problem. And that's why I'm so passionate about the Online Trainer Academy. That's why I'm so passionate about the type of work we do, even though it's way harder to build a business doing what we do, teaching business. I mean, we are, we are basically salmon swimming upstream. I mean, we are... Ev it's so much easier for it would have been so much easier for me to just build another useless I would I won't say useless for me to build another continuing education certification about something that you are already good at and convincing you to buy it it's way easier to get you to buy that than it is to actually give you what you really need mm -hmm. which is the business and marketing and distance client care support that you really need if you're going to make it in this business. But you don't really want that because it's hard, because it's different right. from what you're already good at. If you're already good at something or you're already interested in something, it's way easier and way more comfortable to just sit back and pretend that you're moving forward by learning more about the thing you're already good at. It's like, well, there's a reason why PhDs aren't really rewarded that much in our society. It's because pushing the envelope on a tiny, tiny little aspect of knowledge without combining that and figuring out how that knowledge is useful really doesn't do all that much um, versus using that greater education and combining it. I mean, you know, you have examples of people who have done PhDs. Dr. John Brody is a great example of that. Somebody who's done a PhD and is like, okay, great. I know a lot about this thing. Now I need to figure out how to become a marketer so that I can impact people with this knowledge that I have. And then once I do that, 
I'll give myself more time and space and money and freedom to be able to learn even more about this thing. And now I have people to impact with. Um, I don't think there's anything to do with the topic we selected, but I feel like it kind of makes sense in the context, right? Yeah, yeah, Ambrose, it, Ambrose. It, I, like, I like it when Ambrose here because she gives you some feedback. Alex was like a, was like a statue. He was like a terracotta <laughs> statue. He didn't move. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this thing on. I was like knocking, like, you know. Send him a bunny face. Only way to fix that. <laughs> more, more of a cicada That's how we shell. We resolve shit around here. Oh, God bless you and your bunny faces. Um, right, right, right. You know, I've never, I've never heard, you know, a more problematic story attached to the two words "bunny face." Uh, it's just, <laughs> This is, this is the most outright problematic thing I've ever heard attached to those two words. So I think I think it does apply to what you're saying, Jonathan, because a, a lot of times, a lot of times with our students and grads, and I think that they, as they progress further, they also look back and realize I wasn't actionable enough. You know, that's something else that I think we can across the board say that we wished that we understood in the beginning. I've here's what I find that it falls into two categories. People who are not really so, I don't know if desperate, they, they're, they're not in a place where there's a great sense of urgency. Uh, mm -hmm. and that usually allows for some type of procrastination, right? You can do things that look like you're doing something or people like where Keto and I were, where you have no choice <laughs> but to act because the urgency is so great. You're literally trying to figure out how you're going to make it to the next day. Um, so I think that it can be it can be something that you regret looking back on if you didn't take action right away because yeah. that's where all the, the juice is in that squeeze, right? Like you don't you don't get anything out of it when you have to be active. And to what you just said, that's another thing that I wish that I knew when I first started is what the most actionable certifications were for me to take mm -hmm. what the most actionable continuing education, more specifically, one thing that I wish that I realized was that I needed to spend more time with a population and then decide what my certifications were going to be, you know, my continuing education to the extent that I could. At some point, you know, you lose two years, you've got to do something like you got to figure out something to do. Okay. Basket weaving, uh, for bodybuilders. Sounds good. Let me just take this to get my continuing ed, you know, but I wish that I would have allowed myself to interact with clients more in the beginning and then decide what my next track was instead of just randomly picking certifications. Right. Uh, I picked some good ones, you know, admittedly, but corrective exercise specialist, I didn't really need that one. Um, you know, it's it it something to do and I get to say it, but, you know, so I think... I think overall, one thing that I wish that I knew was it's okay to spend time with your demographic and allow yourself to evolve in this business a little more before you make your next set of decisions. Yeah. You don't have to have an itemized plan. Six months in, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Let, sort of let it come to you. Let, let it. It's just like the love boat thing. They say, let it go. Let it flow. And it floats back to you, right? Let it flow. It floats back to you, the <laughs> love boat. So, so I wish that I would have let it flow, and let the and let the industry sort of float back to me. Uh, it would have been a smile on a friendly shore, just like the love boat thing. Love boat right. solves so many I'm a, things. I'm gonna stop there. you right there because I got something to say. <laughs> oh, the worst, the absolute worst position that you can be in is just gliding by and just doing okay. Right. And and the reason for that is when things are really, really bad, you're forced to do something about it. And oftentimes, as we know, I mean, if you take action consistently, reliably, like it's gonna work out. It, it, it really will. It may not work out in the way that you want. It may not work out as big as you want it to, but if you do take action, it will work out. The reason why it often doesn't work out is because you're not doing anything. I mean, we talked about this in episode 100. Mm -hmm. Like, how many things have you done where you're like, okay, I have this plan and I'm going to actually see it through for a minimum six months consistently. Well, I'm going to do something at least once a week working on this plan for six months. If you're listening, like, think if you've actually ever done that once. Mm 
for your business. And my guess is, in, in many cases of the seven or eight people listening, my guess is five or six of them. <laughs> the answer to that is probably no. And that's because things are okay. And that's a really bad, bad place to be in. When things are just okay, you don't act. You don't actively have a fire lit under your butt to make it better. When things are really, really bad, you do. Ren, Carolina, you guys are good examples of that. Like, yo, Ren, I mean, when you're acting to chase after the guy who's repoing your car. Right. Like, it's, uh, it's inspiring in a way that I've not felt since I heard Pavarotti uh, at the Sydney Opera House. I'm telling you, just riveted. It, it, touch, it touched my soul to see the taillights of my own. Tell me, tell me, tell me, my own car tell being me on your soul away. where the man touched you. Uh. <laughs> right here. Um, so, so, you know, we haven't heard from Amber, and we often don't. Uh, but, I, but I'd like to know, Amber, ha, are there things that you look back on this episode, perhaps, uh, that, that you, you see as things you wish you knew that maybe you shouldn't have interacted with? Um, obviously you'll have to listen to this episode again or interact with it twice, but you know, what's, what's on that list for you? Like, what do you, what do you look back on and say, nah, could have done better there. So I think it's funny and myself included in this with students is we have this really odd mix of an insane ego and also thinking incredibly little of ourselves all at the same time. And so we, we think really highly of our capabilities, but yet we're really kind of scared to talk about it because we're afraid of what people might think. And so I, I wish I would have known just how little of a shit people cared about what I said, you know, like not to take it so seriously. Um, cause like, I, like, like I, I tell students all the time, I would literally blush when I would post, like I was terrified of, of sharing anything. And I wish I would have just kind of really known how little it mattered like nobody thought you know took it that seriously and if they saw it cool and then you know 30 seconds later i was out of their uh, out of their minds so yeah um, i wish i would have and i think in the back of my mind i knew that but it's always different when it's us right so um that that stands out to me pretty heavily and and admittedly you were coming off the, the, the debacle of that uh best buy grand opening uh so i could see how that that trauma led you to that place, you I know. Have so many bad retail stories, dude. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, cr crying uh, incessantly as you're explaining how the HTC Evo phone works to a customer at Best Buy. Uh, <laughs> Back when the Razer was really big. The, oh, the, oh, like, that's pink one. Oh my god. It's a major purchase. The yeah. the Motorola Razer. Uh, it, you oh know, the god. genius of our times. <laughs> Brought Amber to tears as she was explaining it yeah. <laughs> during the Best Buy grand opening. Jonathan, chime in here. You you look like if something's hit your mind, some something that you you're dying to share, and I just want to hear it. <laughs> no, you read the situation wrong. <laughs> like no, not at all. Yeah, so you know, <laughs> fundamentally, what what we're I'll, I'll go on. I'll, I'll pass over you. I don't mind doing that. Um, so fundamentally, what we're saying here is. A good percentage of what you're probably thinking now in the beginning of your journey as a health and wellness practitioner, particularly in the online space, it's probably kind of wrong. Right? You're, you're probably kind of hung up on a lot of things that don't mean nearly as much uh, as you think they do. Jonathan's got a little bit I'm of a stiff, clavicle man. problem. I'm <laughs> stiff. I got to stretch yeah. more. <laughs> man, welcome to the other side of your 30s. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> look, you know, be prepared to enjoy more and more of that as, as you go on. Calvin, um, Calvin had his first day, we call it school, but his first day back at daycare today. And I feel like last night he was like nervous about it. And so he was, he was up a lot last night. And I think just that, like that one night of just not sleeping that well, I think my body just did mm -hmm. not heal the way that it should have all of the weight that I've been lifting. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just throw that in there. Of all the gains I've been making. <laughs> What, Not what, sure if you knew, <laughs> podcast listeners, one, two, three, four, five, six, that are still left. Whatever, but, whatever Jonathan. 
Yeah, good for you. Yeah, Johnathan is such a swole deer. Yeah, it's <laughs> so, deer. so swole. He's so swole. Swolger. Um, Do you remember when there was like that was like the thing when everybody was trying to make names out of like swole and stuff like that? Yes, yes, yes. It was Everything a few years was ago. Thing. Everything was swole and swole, swole patrol. Bro. <laughs> Everything. Every single day, there's a new thing for me to ignore in social there media. There was there was a point uh, where everybody was trying to put out. I remember this was like six or seven years ago, where everybody was trying to put out products that were anabolic, and it was just like the the, the, the marketing yes. gimmick was just anabolic. And I remember somebody that I knew. I mean, I wasn't friends with at all, and certainly not now. But uh, he put out this product called Anabolic Running. And and I remember him standing up at this like mastermind that I was at and bragging about how he has been selling this thing called anabolic running and how he discovered this way to make running anabolic. And I'm like, you are 21 years old with no university education. <laughs> what kind of new age bullshit is this, man? Like there is literally zero chance that there is any validity to anything you're saying. This is such <laughs> unbelievable nonsense, and everybody here is stupider for having listened to it. It, you know just... it. it cracks me up because you always hear like bro gyms being like, ah, oh, you know, women can be so dumb with their like shrink wraps and their detox teas. And I'm like, dude, do I need to list the, like the magnanimous ways in which bro gyms are, can be like absolute just idiots for marketing oh stuff too, right? Yeah. So, really. Uh, everything's anabolic. Anabolic running is when you run while eating a rotisserie chicken, and there's a protein <laughs> enema up your backside. That's what anabolic running is. You know, <laughs> while inserting a protein enema, that's anabolic running. Um, it's just, it's one of those things. Point. It's one of those things where there are two words that just make no sense together. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, it just like, just, it's fine. Like, like oh, yeah. it's. First of all, if you're 21, you're anabolic. Like, if you're like a 21 year old dude, like, everything there ain't you do much is anabolic, bro. Do. <laughs> you know? Just get that out of the way. It's going away. And yeah. enjoy it, because as a 35 year old guy, I can tell you I like to nap. But. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, and I'm far less anabolic at 47. Uh, I don't, I haven't, I haven't felt any anabolic tendencies at all. Um, tra tracking back to the shell of a show that we're producing right now, um, <laughs> it needed to be said. You know, the 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 point here is as as we hopefully, thank God, wrap up uh, whatever this is that we brought you today. Uh, yeah, I gotta the, eat. The, yeah, My watch like I'm wearing is, the nice Casio today. Did you guys know? Oh, so this oh, is you the, got gold the gold one. Casio. I ordered oh, the silver. God. I got the full set now. Oh, oh that's God. now that the silver Casio was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a, a seventy-eight ninety-nine. Was that American? Uh, seven, no, seven, Canadian. Around, Canadian. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's like a thousand dollars American. So like Monopoly uh, money. Th this <laughs> is my this is my impulse purchase. Like everybody else, you know, their impulse purchases are like fancy things and whatever. It's like shit. I can't believe I'm like I'm going to bed at night like kept up because I'm worrying because I spent $78 on a Casio I'm like shit I didn't need that oh my god what am I going to do your defense is a silver Casio Jonathan that, <laughs> that makes a difference man uh, do, they, do, they have a, do they have a platinum Casio is there a platinum Casio watch that might be next I wait till wait till we reach the next milestone in the business for okay. me to afford right. it I don't think and then the makes. diamond crusted Casio right, right. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's another example of words that don't go together, like diamond encrusted Casio. What? Right. <laughs> like, why? Oh my god! Like, no. Those, those words don't belong in the same sentence, Carol. Well played, by the way. It's very clever. Um, so, back to the shell of a show that we produced today. Uh, what we what we hope you understand is that there's there's action is going to help you uh, sort of minimize you know, the things that you wish you would have known, just keep it as simple as possible, man. Like a lot of you are going to overthink things that fundamentally don't matter. Uh, I think we always talk about the same thing on the online trainer show in terms of what solves what's going on with your business, get some people involved so they can corrupt the process. You think you perfected. That's, that's one great way <laughs> to yeah. save yourself some time, just get a couple of humans involved in it. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll straighten everything out for you. 
you know, you'll know right away if you built something worthy or not. Um, but certainly don't avoid that. Your name's not super important. Um, you know, it's not super important how you post and what you post specifically early on to Amber's point about being sort of overly considerate about how people are going to receive what she's authentically saying, you know, towing that line between, um, knowing enough to act, but not knowing so much that you procrastinate, I think is what Jonathan mentioned. That's an important tip. And God knows, I can't even remember what Keto said because I just keep reading bunny face on the screen and I'm woefully distracted from my thoughts every time I see that because of the nightmare that is her residence. Uh, Keto, what did you talk about earlier? I, I can't even... I can't even look at you. I right talked now. about how you don't need to have it all figured out in the beginning. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. by doing and trying is that you will find your path. <laughs> yeah. That's and that's that's enough out of you for today, kiddo. That had, <laughs> had quite enough from you today. You've ruined you've ruined Easter for me for the next ten years, by the way. Thank you. Um you see the bunny faces all over the place. I'm like, oh where's the rest of the bunny? I'll but, send it to you. <laughs> no, no thank you. No thank you. Um can you put that bunny on your offender? Is that, do bunnies go, do animals go in there? That's a great idea. It's just a face so that, I don't want anybody to ever forget this bunny in the afterlife. Like, um, honestly, like the practical side of me was just like, oh, there's our, our biology homeschool class for tomorrow. <laughs> Yo. No, 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 no. I would, I would love that, to see you. Get that, get that head in formaldehyde. Right. <laughs> oh, my oh my gosh i would love to see you and those precious young ladies huddled around the table of a partial bunny head uh, studying biology for homeschooling um, i don't think that mom of the year award is too far behind Kettle. did we add value today <laughs> yeah I was told I was told by somebody on the internet that every piece of content you should create you should you should do so um, and add value to the people <laughs> listening to you. So did we add value? Because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. I don't I don't mm -hmm. I don't think that. First well, of all, I I feel like you all add value to my life. So. Well, thank you, Kenna. That's all <laughs> that's all I care about. I feel like You're I've welcome. done my job here. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah. Anybody listening to our content, Jonathan, obviously knows that that's not a that's not a goal of the the production. <laughs> uh, so that's a non-listener. That's a casual asking you that question. Yeah, you know, we, we only, <laughs> you know, we're only, we're dedicated to Lithuania at this point. Um, so uh, let's let's do show notes so we can all escape this. Yeah, this, this, I feel like this, this nightmare this was one of our lesser episodes. Yeah, that's fine. Let's yeah. do show notes. Yeah, you know, it's gonna happen in in the, in it's terms of continuity and and mm. consistency. You know, it's not all it's not all gonna be great. Can't uh, all be good, but, everybody. Mm -hmm. Can't yeah, all be good. We, Somebody will find something in this one. So show notes can be found. Yes, it's, it's, there's a person out there that's going to say that that episode changed my life. Mm. Uh, it's none of the people on the podcast. Ooh, I got apparently. a I got a message. I got a message from somebody uh, saying did that, you? saying that the, the yeah um, do the show notes and I'll find it and then I'll I'll tell All you right. afterwards. Uh, I got a nice message too uh, early, yesterday uh, from somebody who listens to the podcast. Um, so in any case. Show notes can be found. Show notes for this spectacular episode of the Online Trainer Show can be found at onlinetrainer.com slash podcast. Um, this has been episode 100 and something, uh, maybe six or eight. I don't six. know. 26. All right. Way to go. Uh, there, used to be a, there used to be a show on, on black entertainment television. You guys can watch if you're listening. It's not off limits. There's no, there's no identification required to turn to the TV show. <laughs> but it used to be called 106 in Park. And they had popular artists on there, and and I danced in front of my television. So I like 106. Jonathan, did you find the the complimentary post that you were looking for? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's complimentary. Um, no, but, uh, anyway. but she said that she she said that she put it into action. She said one of the podcasts you guys had had one of the podcast episodes you guys mentioned. Um, you said that if you don't announce that you have a product or service, ain't nobody yes. gonna know how, and ain't nobody gonna sign up. So I decided yeah. to start announcing it more across my social platforms. Just wanted yeah. to share, podcast has its gems. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, that's the same. That's the same message that I was tagged in, and I think Keto, were you tagged in that message as well? Yeah. Okay. And that's that's Garza, Gra Graza, Graza. 
I know there was a G yes. and a Z, and there was an H in there somewhere. Yes. Uh, but she had a lovely yeah. teal background. Let's give her. Mm-hmm. Let's give her a, a shout out. Um, yeah. Glazelle. Uh, it's it's G A R Z H E L. Uh, okay. Go follow is, her on it, Instagram. On Instagram. Yeah. Fo- follow Glazelle on Instagram. She had a great carousel post with uh, some exercises that she was doing. I think it was all posterior chain movements, deadlifts, and squats and stuff. I I don't know. Uh, but she had lovely colors, and she's she's out. She's putting herself out there and letting people yeah. know that she's enrolling clients, and we love that kind of thing here mm-hmm. on the online trainer show. That was that dramatic. Is that cool the way I did it? Um, it dramatic. sounded like it sounded like you kind of your like internet froze a little bit. You were like in the online trainer show. Uh, 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 what I meant to say uh, was on the. Online trainer show. There you go. Uh, do the jingle or something. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast.